Chairman. Admiral, I'm over here. Thanks, sir. It's good to see you again. Uh, before I get started, I just want to tell you there were 15 of us that met two weeks ago with General Brooks and Seoul, and I think we all came away from there understanding the seriousness of the situation, but we had 100 percent confidence in his leadership and the troops he has under his command and where he's going with that, and I just wanted to say that after having an hour and a half with him that day. Uh, last year, you and I visited in Hawaii at the RIMPAC exercise, and the, I think, two hours you spent with the eight of us that were there, I just got to tell you, that was a tour de force. It, it, I, rare, it, rarely in my lifetime have I been in the room with somebody who had such complete command over everything that you were talking to us about over an incredibly broad and diverse theater. So I, I wanted to compliment you on that. You and I had a little bit of a colloquy about the littoral combat ship, and uh, you were telling me about how it helped you increase and distribute your lethality in the theater, and you reminisced about the days when you were a young uh, naval commander and you were dealing with the Soviet corvettes, the little smaller vessels that the um, Soviets had that they could put a missile on, uh, and, and you were very good about going over with me and the others there about um, having that small combatant out there, particularly now that we can put um, harpoon missiles on them and, and add to what you're doing. Uh, two months ago, I was in Singapore, um, and uh, I noticed that you had an LCS and some EPFs there. Uh, last week, uh, Admiral Gabrielson stated, uh, we're ready and excited to welcome multiple LCSs to the region and put them to work, and there's no shortage of meaningful work for these ships. Can you discuss the impact of having the LCSs and the EPS in the theater? Yes, sir. Um, so I've gone on record as being a fan of the littoral combat ship in both its principal forms, and I, and I am a fan of it. Uh, I, I would be a, a bigger fan of the um, uh, upgunned, if you will, LCSs, which... Uh, the frigate? The frigate. Thanks to the Congress, we're going to get. Uh, and I think it's important. Uh, I want to uh, acknowledge our great friend in Singapore, or Singapore as our great friend, that is, uh, who uh, allow us to, to uh, rotationally deploy uh, these ships uh, to their country. So I'm, I'm grateful for that. Um, I think the Navy and uh, Vice Admiral Roden at the uh, Surf Pack, Surf Forces, Surface Forces, are on the right track with this theory of distributed lethality. And I think the LCS has a role to play in that. So again, I, I'm a fan of LCS. The story I told was when I was a, uh, a tactical action officer on the USS Saratoga uh, back in the 80s, one of my jobs was to keep track of all these, these little ships that the Soviets had, the Danuchkas, Tarantules, and OSA two boats. These are small, small patrol boats. But the reason we had to keep track of them, the reason we were worried about them, the reason the captain and the admiral uh, were on my case all the time, where are these guys, uh, is because each one carried uh, a Styx missile or more. So they carried uh, 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 a missile that could threaten the carrier and the carrier strike group, uh, punching far, far above their weight. And I think that, uh, that LCS uh, should do that. And I want the Chinese every day to worry about where the LCS is, just like I used to worry about where the Osas, the Nuchkas, and Tarantules were uh, back in the 80s. Well, I think the um, proposal from the Navy, or at least the way they're working on it today, both variants of the LCS, upgraded to be a frigate, would have multiple missile tubes on them and would be able to respond the way that you said. So just to make sure I understand what you're saying, you want them to have the sort of missile capability that the Navy's trying to get to with the new frigate design. Absolutely. And I'm, I'm agnostic on, on that type of missile. You know, that's, that's, a, that's a service decision. But I, I want them to be equipped with missiles that can sink ships. And, that, and having multiple numbers of those, not just we only have the Coronado out there right, right. now, but having more than one, having several out there, that you can place around wherever you want, that adds to what the Chinese or any other adversary has to worry about with the placement of our fleet out there. Right. On a combat side, it does it absolutely. And on the everyday non-combat peace operations, humanitarian assistance, the whole range of operations uh, and missions uh, that the Navy has in the region, uh, the LCS adds to that. Well, I really appreciate your comments on that. But once again, your leadership, General Brooks' leadership, 
I have a high level of confidence that we have the right people and the right things in place to do what we've got to do if something bad happens there. And I appreciate your leadership and his leadership, and I yield back.